Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. Herring are an extremely important food source for predatory fish in both fresh and salt water. This durable little craft fur creation does a remarkable job of imitating juvenile herring. The fly starts with a heavy duty short shank size 8 hook. Get the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. A rotary vise, although not essential, will make several of this pattern's tying steps a good bit easier. Load a bobbin with the spool of black unithread, then get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye. After taking several wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. For some sparkle and shine, snip two strands of the silver flashaboo free from the hank, then find the midpoint of the two strands. Place the midpoint against the near side of the hook and take a couple of thread wraps to begin securing it. Coax the material to on top of the hook shank, then pull the forward pointing portion back and take rearward thread wraps over top of it to pin it back. End with your tying thread at the initial tie-in point. Snip a one inch square of craft fur off down close to the backing. Pull out the majority of the lower, shorter fibers from the butt ends of the fur, then remove any overly long tips. Randomly tease the butt ends out to make them look more natural, then grip the clump two-thirds of the way down from the tips. Lay that point on top of the hook shank above your tying thread and take a few tight wraps to secure it. Pull back on the forward pointing portion of the material and take thread wraps first in front of it, then just barely over top of it to hold everything back. It should fan out quite well at this point. A drop of super glue, here fly tire z -Ment, applied to the thread wraps, then covered with more thread wraps, will help to keep everything locked in place. Rotate your tying vise or flip the fly over so the underside of the hook faces up. Next, snip a similar sized clump of white craft fur free from the backing. This time, however, simply strip out the shorter fibers from the butt ends. Get hold of the clump and measure it so it's the same length as the blue craft fur. While keeping that measurement, snip the excess butt ends off square. Maintain a tight grip and place the butt ends down on the shank behind the hook eye, then take tight wraps of tying thread to secure them. Spread the fibers out so you have roughly equal amounts on either side of the hook, then take a few more thread wraps to lock them in place. Once again, reach for the super glue, coat the exposed thread wraps with it, then take tight wraps of tying thread through the adhesive to set it. Flip the fly back to its normal orientation. Now, get hold of the purple craft fur, and this time snip about half the amount free from the backing. Here too, you're going to want to strip the shorter fibers from the butt ends and remove any of the longer tips. Also, randomly pull out the butt ends to make them uneven. Locate the approximate midpoint of the clump and place it on top of the hook shank above your tying thread. Take a couple of thread wraps to secure the fibers to the near side of the hook, then pull the forward pointing portion back and anchor it to the far side. Take a few rearward thread wraps to keep everything smoothly swept back. Once again, reach for the super glue, coat the wraps with it, then take several wraps through it. Pick up your whip finish tool and use it to do a five or six turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. Remove the fly from the vise and begin trimming it to shape. Take your time and trim the fibers off to form a diamond shape that's thinner toward the tail of the fly. Trim parallel to the fibers to give them a natural taper. When you're happy with the result, place the fly back in the jaws of your tying vise. Squeeze out a small dollop of gel super glue onto a scrap piece of paper and pick up some with the tip of your bodkin. Apply the adhesive to the near side of the fly just behind the thread wraps. Do this on both sides of the fly. Pick up one of the 3D eyes with the tip of your bodkin or a hobby knife and lay the eye on top of the adhesive on the near side of the hook. 
press down on the eye to set the adhesive. Then, select another eye and affix it in the same manner to the far side of the fly. The eyes should be well adhered and mirror images of each other. Pick up your head cement and apply an ample coating to the exposed thread wraps, then let it sink in and dry. This is one of those patterns that gives the illusion of bulk, but actually has very little, so it casts well and moves naturally in the water. 